Hey guys, welcome to the What If Toph Became the Avatar video series. This is a series where I do a retelling of the Avatar The Last Airbender story, but instead of Aang being the Avatar, in this story, it is Toph. Can Toph save the world the same way Aang did, or will she fail miserably? This is part 6 of the series. If you haven't seen any of the earlier parts, then you should probably go back and check them out. I'd suggest starting from either part 1 or part 2. Part 1 is kind of slow, so if you want to skip it, you can start at part 2 and watch the part 1 recap that's provided in that video. There's also a playlist on my channel with all the parts in order for further guidance. Anyways, let's get into the video. Sokka, Katara, Hakoda and his men, Paku, the remaining Water Tribe soldiers, Iroh, Jiang Zhang and his men along with Che, and Piando board the ships, and set sail for the Fire Nation. I can't believe my father let me co-lead with him, exclaimed Sokka. I just hope I'm up to the task. You're a great leader, Sokka, smiles Katara. You just need to have more faith in yourself. I appreciate that. Well, it's almost a day of black sun. I guess all of our planning and preparing will finally be put to the test. We will stop Ozai before he can complete his mission and save Toph, declares Katara. Let's just hope she's alive. She's alive, Sokka. Katara is determined to save Toph and has been training super hard in waterbending with Master Paku. Because Katara is training with Paku, she is improving at a quicker rate than she did in the original series. Also, Sokka has been training with Piandao to become a swordsman. Look, Katara, our first priority is to defeat the Fire Lord. Of course, if Toph is alive, we will do everything we can to save her. But our main objective is to stop Fire Lord Ozai. If we can do that, the world is saved. Ozai lays on his bed, rolling over in pain. Curse that avatar, she got me with a great shot. Damn it. Don't worry, Lord Ozai, smiles the doctor. You will be back to full strength in a few weeks. But that wound is permanent. Make sure you protect that area because it's vulnerable. Ozai laughs. I'll admit it, the avatar was stronger than I imagined. Even though I had the home field advantage and the crowd was screaming at her, she managed to permanently injure me. Fair play. Unfortunately for her, it wasn't enough. After a few weeks, the Day of Black Sun finally arrives. Overall, the plan for attacking the Fire Nation will be similar, but there are a few key differences from the original storyline. For one, in this story, Team Avatar got the White Lotus, which is obviously going to help them significantly. Of course, King Bumi isn't there, but they have Uncle Iroh, Jiang Jiang, Paku, and Piandao. Also in this story, the Fire Nation do not know about the Day of Black Sun, so they aren't going to be prepared for it like they were in the original. Another advantage is that they have Uncle Iroh, who knows the layout of the capital pretty well because he used to live there. However, one major problem that the heroes have in this story is that there is no way they can fly because Aang isn't there and neither is Appa. And this is a huge disadvantage because in the original story, the plan was for Aang to fly and kill Fire Lord Ozai during the eclipse, while everyone else would keep the rest of the Fire Nation busy. The issue is that no one can fly in this scenario, so they're going to have to march directly through the Fire Nation. So even though they have the help of the White Lotus and the element of surprise, it's still going to be almost equally as hard as it was in the original story. Also, I know that the Mechanist could potentially provide Team Avatar with the tools that could help them fly, but it would be very hard for everyone to learn how to use these glider things in a short period of time. Also, they can't bring large ships, obviously, because it's not going to fit in the submarine. Because they don't have an Avatar on their side, the team needed to elect another person to go and kill the Fire Lord. The person they chose to complete this task is Master Paku. They chose Paku because he will be the strongest person on the team during the time of the Eclipse since Jiang Jiang and Iroh cannot firebend. Katara begs to join Paku's side because she wants to save Toph, and she believes that Toph would be near the Fire Lord. Paku says no initially, but ultimately allows her to join him. So Team Avatar get past the gates of Azulon the same way they did in the original series with the use of some marines. The time has finally arrived, men. Today is the day we end the Fire Nation reign, declares Hakoda. Once we get on land, it'll be an all-out assault. Our main goal is to try to sneak Katara and Paku to where the Fire Lord is, states Sokka. We will travel in a diamond formation. 
Master Paku and Katara will be in the middle of the diamond at the start of the battle. The first thing we have to do is take out the battlements, because according to Master Iroh, that will be our biggest obstacle. We have to try to push our way through Palace City. Once we get there, Master Paku and Katara will run in to stop Fire Lord Ozai and save Toph. Katara and Master Paku have to try to get to the Fire Lord before the eclipse ends. We have one hour before the eclipse starts. Once it begins, both of you only have eight minutes to complete the task. Hakoda takes Katara aside. Katara, as your father, I am not going to let you attack the Fire Lord directly. Make sure you get Toph to safety and then quickly get out of there. I can take care of myself, Dad. I know that, Katara, but this is the Fire Lord we are talking about. He is the strongest firebender alive right now. Don't worry, all I want to do is save Toph. I'll leave defeating the Fire Lord to Master Paku. The invasion force gets inside the Fire Nation and the battle commences. Now in this storyline, unfortunately, Team Avatar do not have any help from the Earth Kingdom, so they don't have any of these earthbending tanks. However, they do have these giant trucks that the Mechanist is driving here. In this case, they have filled the back with water instead of rocks, since the invasion force has a lot of waterbenders from the Northern Water Tribe. Uncle Iroh and Jiang Jiang start the attack by destroying the battlements. What the hell is this? exclaims Fire Nation Soldier 1. We are being attacked, yells Fire Nation Soldier 2. I can't believe these people are stupid enough to invade us. This is the Fire Nation capital. Who do they think they are? Wait a minute. Is that? I can't believe it. It's General Iroh, the Dragon of the West. What? He's a part of the invasion? This may be a bigger problem than we thought. Contact Fire Lord Ozai now. The heroes continue to move closer and closer towards the Fire Lord. A few minutes later, the news about the invasion reaches Ozai, Zuko, and a recently recovered Azula. My traitorous brother finally decides to show his face, bellows Fire Lord Ozai. My uncle is here, thinks Zuko. I have to speak with him. I'm gonna kill him myself, yells Ozai. It's not just Iroh we have to worry about, sir, reasons the Fire Nation captain. There's a whole invasion force behind him. When the time is right, you will be able to face Iroh yourself. But right now, we need to focus on the task at hand. I can help you, father. Just let me go out there and stop them. Let me prove to you my worth, pleads Azula. Ozai laughs. You can't do anything in your sorry state. Send Mei and Tai Li. I'll go too, father. I want to defeat those invaders, announces Zuko. I didn't think you'd want to fight, Zuko. Go ahead if you must, states Ozai. Azula is visibly upset because she notices her father seems to like Zuko more than her. The invasion force is fighting and defeating multiple Fire Nation soldiers and is moving closer and closer into Palace City. A few minutes later, Zuko, Mei, and Tai Li enter the battlefield. They start taking out some of the invasion force soldiers and some waterbenders. May soon comes face to face with Sokka. So, we meet again, boomerang boy, says May as she withdraws two daggers. Sokka smiles and throws his boomerang at May. She quickly ducks under. I know all of your tricks now. When the boomerang returns towards May, she hits it with one of her daggers to deflect it off course. However, that was just a distraction. Sokka runs in with his sword in hand and disarms May. I've picked up a thing or two since we met, smiles Sokka. He hits Mei in the head with the butt of his sword, knocking her out. Two waterbenders come in to attack Tai Li, but she swiftly avoids their attacks and chi blocks both of them. Tai Li ends up face to face with Katara. Oh, I remember you. You're that girl that can't do anything, laughs Tai Li. This statement angers Katara. Who is this girl? asks Paku. Don't worry, I'll deal with her myself. You keep moving towards the palace and I'll join you soon, states Katara. Paku runs forward, but Tai Li obviously doesn't want that, so she lunges towards Paku. However, before she can attack him, Katara wraps water around her ankle, turns it into ice, and throws her a few feet away. Tai Li is surprised, but flips mid-air and lands on her feet. This window gives Paku the opportunity to run away. Remember that I'm your opponent, not him, yells Katara. 
Seems like you have learned a few new tricks, smiles Tai Li. Katara draws all of her water and wraps it around her arms. She tries hitting Tai Li, but Tai Li avoids her attacks. Can't let her get too close, thinks Katara. Katara takes the water around her arms and pushes it all towards Tai Li, and then turns it into ice, freezing Tai Li to the point where she can't move. Tai Li is surprised by Katara's power. She beat me almost as quickly as the Avatar did, thinks Tai Li. Katara refills her water and runs to catch up with Master Paku. Zuko swiftly dodges an attack from a waterbender and hits him with a fire jab. Zuko, is that you? inquires a familiar voice from nearby. Zuko turns around and widens his eyes. Uncle, I've been looking for you. Anyways guys, that is the end of the video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I apologize for the long wait. I knew that it would be hard for me to upload videos during the end of April and early May because of exams. Luckily, I was able to get this video out though. The good news is that this week I got finals and after that, I'm going to have a lot more free time, which means I'm going to be uploading more frequently. So you are no longer going to have to wait three weeks for a new video. Also, once finals is over, I can free up more space on my computer and I can upload longer videos. Once this series is over, I plan to upload one video with all the parts in it, so it's like one big movie. And don't worry, part 7 won't take me as long as it took me to upload this video. Anyways guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.